Hey, what's up everybody? It's Thursday morning, time for take five again. So pause what you're doing and let's dig into the word and get this day started off the right way. We are recapping our sermon from Sunday morning entitled, A Thirsty Woman and a Needy God. And we've spent the last couple of days discussing some things that we've learned from our text in John chapter four. The first thing that we learned was that our God desires our worship. That Jesus actually said that he is searching the earth, looking for those who will worship him. And then we took a couple of days to define worship. And we learned that the Bible defines worship in, in two ways. The first being that we worship God ritualistically, you know, through our Sunday services, basically that, that we lift our hands and sing songs and clap our hands and shout unto him with praise, all of those things. And then we learned that God also desires a lifestyle of worship. Basically that, that we do everyday tasks and we do everything in our lives with an attitude of worship, understanding that we can do those things in a way that pleases God. And so today we're going to actually go back to John 4 and look at something that Jesus told that woman at the well in verse 23, he told her that the time was coming, indeed it's even here now, when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. That Then he said God is looking for those who will worship him in this manner. Over the last couple of days, we have understood that that the styles and the methods of our worship have, have changed a little bit uh, from thousands of years ago when the people were under the old covenant. But we understand that God still desires our worship, both ritualistically and through our life. The one thing that we would need to understand today is that the only thing that has changed by what, uh, from what God wants and desires in our worship is that we do it in spirit and in truth, Jesus said. So let's look at truth today. What is that truth? Well, very simply, it's Jesus. It, it, it's Jesus. Hebrews chapter 10 says, And so, dear brothers and sisters, we can boldly enter heaven's most holy place because of the blood of Jesus. By his death, Jesus opened a new life and life-giving way through the curtain into the most holy place. And that, Jesus, is is the truth that you and I are supposed to worship God through in this new covenant that we are under now. In the Old Testament, in the Old Covenant, the Israelites had to worship God through a priest. and They had to go to the temple or to the tabernacle and they had to go into that priest and give their sacrifice to him and then the priest would go into the presence of God, into the most holy place, and he would worship God basically for the people. And then under the new covenant, when God sent Jesus into the earth to, to be the ultimate sacrifice for mine and your sins, he changed everything up. And now God says that if you want to worship me, you don't have to go through a priest. You don't have to go through a pastor. You don't have to go through a prophet. You can worship me as long as you do it through your faith in Jesus Christ. So that is the truth that Jesus was telling this woman at the well about, that, that things have changed. She was asking him, Jesus, where should we worship? Should we worship in Jerusalem, which the, the Jews considered to be the holy city where the old temple was? Or should we worship on Mount Gerizim where the Samaritans believed that they should worship because of some of their ancestors? That's where they worshiped. And Jesus is like... This is a new covenant. You know, it doesn't matter where you worship or it necessarily doesn't even matter how you worship. But what matters is that you worship God in spirit and in truth. And that starts with your faith in Jesus Christ. Then we learn in John chapter 14, 10 chapters after our main text, that Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. So Jesus is, is literally the truth that we are supposed to worship God through. Now we don't have to go through a priest. Now we don't have to go through anybody else. We can worship God for ourselves wherever we are, whether we're in church or at home or at the job or even in the bathroom or somewhere like that. We can worship God wherever we are for ourselves. So amazing. It's so awesome 
that God has given us that intimacy back with Him again. That's that very intimacy that He had with Adam and Eve in the beginning before the fall of man. Now we have, can have that same intimacy with God as long as we have our faith in Jesus Christ. So, for most of us today, this is a great, great thing because if you are saved and you have faith in Jesus Christ, Jesus just told us in John 14 that we can have intimacy with God. That is the way that we can truly worship God and please Him if we worship through our faith in His Son. Let's end our time together by quoting the scripture we've been quoting the last few days, Psalms 51, where David said, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a loyal spirit in me. Have a great day today. I'll see you tomorrow morning right here at Take 5.